what a great welcome. I don't know if I can keep up that level of energy. I really like that demonstration of the cognitive and statistical biases of selection and survivorship bias. Are you familiar with these concepts? That's when you do a poll about how drunk were you at the party yesterday, and the only people who are here are the people who didn't go to the party yesterday. So your results are skewed. Where are the people who are hangover? They're not here, so they can't participate in the poll. So those results are not very scientifically accurate. I love little statistical tricks like that. I'm so happy to be in Berlin. I'm so happy to be back at uh, We Are Developers and speaking to you today about trust and security in this new model that we have using open and public blockchains. When I say security, what comes to mind first? Is it a lock? Is it a door? Is it a wall? Is it a safe? You think of physically restricting access. Maybe if you're an information security professional, when I say security, you think of a firewall, an inspection device systems that control access. When I say trust, you probably think of a friend, a person who is dear to you, someone who you have a personal connection. We associate trust with people who are in our local surroundings. And when we try to engage with more people than our local surroundings, our brain starts playing weird tricks to us, just like the statistical bias I talked about before. We trust people who have the same background as us. We trust people who look like us, because evolution has taught us to trust our tribe, because that's a mechanism for survival. And in a modern society, that type of cognitive bias leads to horrible outcomes. Racism, sexism, discrimination, ageism, ableism. You start looking at people and making judgments about trust because your brain is wired to make these mistakes, to use these shortcuts. It's an efficiency machine that does pattern matching. And these patterns are easy and obvious, and you've learned them from birth. It's a very bad model for trust, and it's the only model we have. So when we operate in a society that's greater than about 100 people, we have new models of trust. We have to find other ways to engage with others, other ways to trust, to extend trust to a bigger circle. And what do we do for that? We use intermediaries. We use trusted parties. We trust our bank to protect us from somebody else's check or payment bouncing. We trust authorities. We trust organizations and institutions to operate through a series of rules and policies and build trust for us through that institutional model. And that model is flawed, too. It scales a bit better, but it does something very, very dangerous, which is it gives power to that intermediary that acts as our trusted third party. It gives power to the financial services companies and banks that act as intermediaries of trust. I'm Greek. That trust doesn't go very far in my country. But my country is not unique. I can name two dozen countries that currently, if you say, trust your bank in an audience this size, the laughter will go on for at least 10 minutes, and I won't be able to finish my talk. Trust your government. Germans can say, jawohl. 80% of the world goes, ha, 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 ha. I'm not going to trust my government. They're a bunch of crooks, probably worse than the bankers they appointed. Trust in intermediary institutions also doesn't scale. It doesn't allow us to solve the global problems we need to solve. Each of these institutions has a narrow jurisdiction. It can only operate within the confines of one country, and the norms are different in each country. 
So trust doesn't scale with the models we have. It affords too much power to the intermediaries, power that corrupts and leads to them abusing this power. Ask someone in the U.S. how they feel about trusting the police. You don't call the cops in the U.S. They're more likely to shoot you accidentally than to solve the problem. Trust in power is a dangerous thing in a modern, scalable world, in a globalized economy. Let's think about the models of trust we've got used to for years, and the model of security we've had for years. If you visit European cities, you will see one of the tourist attractions is to visit one of the gates. The Brandenburg Gate, or maybe a gate that's at the outskirts of Paris, one of the eleven gates, or how many there are, that ring Paris. Do you know what those gates are? They used to be actual gates in the medieval wall that surrounded the city. In medieval cities, a wall was security. That's how you keep the barbarians out. You build a wall, the Great Wall of China, the Great Wall on the U.S.-Mexico border that will never be built, and thank God for that. Walls are the model of trust and security that we've had for millennia, and walls fail. And the reason they fail are not because of ladders, although that's also a use, or catapults, or airplanes. The reason they fail is because of trade. Because if you build a wall, you need gates. And those gates need to be open most of the time, so that people can come into the market and sell their wares. And if you are under siege and you close the gates, you have a matter of months before everybody inside starves. And if you close the gates because you don't like the people who are outside, the really interesting and, and vibrant market will be the one that emerges ad hoc right outside the wall. Your marketplace is now outside, not inside. Walls have failed in our modern society because of trade, because we need to move people, move goods, and move value in and out of these globalized cities. So what do we do when we create an information economy on the internet? When we create a new environment for us to trade ideas and trade goods and trade value? We make walls. Only this time, we imbue them with fire. And we call them firewalls, which is very impressive sounding until you actually see one, and it's just a black box with one LED. And what does a firewall do? It creates a barrier to entry. And it replicates the model of, an, of a medieval city. You have an inner core, a trusted center, where corporate data goes to die, to become stale and useless and uncollaborative and unshared. And there's a very nice firewall protecting that core data, but you can't actually use it. Because in order to use it, in order to share it, in order to collaborate, you have to open a gate. And as soon as you open a gate, all of the bad things flow through the gate together with your employees who went on a vacation and took their laptop with them and came back with 17 Trojans, three viruses, and a porn toolbar. And now they put that laptop right inside your corporate firewall, and guess what you now have inside? The barbarians are through the gate. So what do you do? Do you close the gate? No, we built concentric circles, an inner circle, a medium circle, a bigger circle, an even bigger circle. You have your corporate confidential data, then you have your intranet, then you have your wiki, a bit broader, and then you have the open public systems. And just like in a medieval city, when you close the gates, the market ends up growing outside the wall, all of the interesting things all of the value creation, all of the content, all of the open source code, everything is happening outside your walls, outside your firewall. It's happening on GitHub under open source licenses. It's happening on Wikipedia. It's happening on the great open spaces of the internet. And your company isn't participating in any of it because you're too busy hiding behind the wall, scared to connect to the broad internet. When I started consulting about the internet in the 90s, this was the biggest challenge to explain to companies. 
and they would ask me, how can we open ourselves up to the internet? The internet is full of pornographers, criminals, terrorists, and scammers. And so here we are today, and we now have a new model for trust and a new model for security. And this model is not closed, and it doesn't use walls, and it doesn't use gates. It's the open public blockchains. And they develop trust by giving a platform that can mediate without being under the control of any organization or institution, that allows individuals to scale their trust to people they don't know because they can trust the rules of consensus, not each other. And they will have settlements of their transactions and verification of their data by a neutral platform that is not controlled by anyone, by an open, public, transparent platform that is not controlled by anyone, by a censorship-resistant platform that even though totalitarian states hate, they cannot shut it down. They cannot stop it from operating. You can't take Bitcoin out of your country, but you can take your country out of Bitcoin and not share in the benefits. And that applies to every open public blockchain. These are resistant to censorship. They're resistant to control. They give us a transparent platform where we can build trust. Trust between individuals, trust between organizations that are collaborating, new open forms of collaboration, ad hoc companies, decentralized autonomous organizations, work collaboratives, charities that are transparent and allow us to track the spending of money across the world, international payments across borders without controls, without censorship, without the privilege that all of us in this room share to not only have a bank account, but even more importantly, to have an ID that is well documented and to be a full member of a society in which we are not a hunted illegal immigrant or a refugee or a suppressed minority or a woman in a country that is not allowed to own property. And the blockchain sees none of that. It's completely invisible to these platforms because they are neutral. So instead of a model where we have a closed center, we have a model where everything is open and public and auditable by everyone. Where security emerges, not from the control of one institution, but from the collaboration of tens of thousands of nodes, each checking every result to verify it, and each coming together in consensus to say, this is the truth of the last 10 minutes. And I can't control it, but I can verify it. This model is going to change how we do trust and security across the world. It's going to change how we do collaboration across the world. It's going to change the nature of the modern corporation. It's going to change the nature of commerce and trade, because for the first time in human history, every human being on the planet has access to financial services without asking permission, without showing identity, without having to belong to a certain class or status, even if their government doesn't want them to have that. By the simple installation of an application. Software is the new form of banking. And a lot of you may hear the idea that these open blockchains are about making a one-world currency. There could be nothing further from the truth. Or about allowing everyone to be banked without a bank. Or to bank the unbanked, those who do not have access. And I'm here to tell you that what these platforms are here to give us is a choice to engage in a platform of trust through consensus that frees us to trust many and to scale our social organizations to massive levels and engage with the entire international population of humanity without barriers. It is not about banking the unbanked. It's about unbanking all of us. It's not about creating new trusted institutions. It's about creating trust without institutions. Trust through software. Trust as a protocol. Trust over IP. TIP. And what do the companies say when you tell them, there's this new trust platform, you can put all of your trust parameters and use this trust protocol in an open, public, transparent, neutral way. The same thing they said in 1995. Isn't that the platform that's being used by drug dealers, terrorists, pornographers, and scammers? 
Yes, it is. Just like the internet. And it's also being used by two billion people sharing cat videos. And it's also being used by thousands of people today, hundreds of thousands of people tomorrow, millions of people the day after, to provide to their children sanitation, education, and a future that cannot be confiscated, cannot be seized, cannot be currency controlled, cannot be shut down by every totalitarian government. It gives people voice and freedom of expression. Because without the freedom to transact, without the freedom to associate, your freedom of expression and your freedom to vote means absolutely nothing. If we go to a world where digital cash is the only cash that exists, if we eradicate cash, as so many governments are trying to do, if we eradicate the ability to transact anonymously, individual to individual, every government that controls that system can turn off your economic life by flipping one bit. You went to the wrong protest, you voted for the wrong party, you talked to the wrong person on the internet. You no longer exist. You have no income, you can't buy food, you can't travel on the trains, you can't take a plane. You think I'm exaggerating? This system exists today. It's called Sesame Credit. It's being trialed in China. It has excluded a hundred million people from using public transportation and flying across the country. It denies people access to fundamental services by virtue of how politically they engage with others. Every country in the world that gives this ability to a government is one bad election from losing their freedom forever. We have a choice. We are at a crossroads. And in this crossroads, we have to pick between a future where trust is a decentralized, open protocol that everybody participates in, or a future where trust is controlled by narrow and narrower centralized interests that use that to control our lives and to prevent us from engaging with each other, that creates tiers not just of citizen versus non-citizen, but of human versus subhuman where people are judged by their credit score as unworthy to participate in the global economy, by their lack of identity as unworthy to participate in commerce. And you know what open public blockchains like Bitcoin say? Everyone is worthy. You don't even need to be human to participate. Software agents can do it for you. There is no requirement for ID. There's no requirement to even prove you have a heartbeat. On the internet, no one knows you're a dog. You remember that expression? On Bitcoin, no one knows that your dog is a millionaire. <laughs> Maybe not, but it's a really interesting future we're building here. We have now, for the first time in history, the ability to scale trust and security to a global level based on an open protocol that no one can corrupt, co-opt, take over and control. And with that model, we can seek freedom, we can build tremendous applications, software that is unstoppable, speech that is uncensorable, commerce that is not able to be deplatformed or silenced. We will take back the internet from the companies that can decide that hate speech is okay, but female nipples are terrifying to our children. Do you know what's terrifying to our children? Fascism is terrifying to our children, not nipples. They have a more intimate and natural relationship with nipples for the first three years of their life, at least. We should be terrified about the future of our children, but not because they're going to be exposed to nudity, but they're going to be exposed to radicalism. And those same companies that adopt their puritanical morality that you didn't vote for and doesn't match your interests, don't give a shit about the environment. They don't give a shit about environmentalism. They don't give a shit about LGBTQ issues. What they do, they put a giant sign with a rainbow that says MasterCard on it. Are you fucking kidding me? Those companies are selling us a fake morality that had been focus grouped. 
and delivered to us packaged in a dopamine engaging algorithm that will tweak our brain until we are mindless drones. We will take back the internet. We will take back our data. We will take back our privacy, which is a fundamental human right. And we will do all of that by building absolutely unstoppable platforms and protocols for the next frontier in trust and security. Thank you. Thank you.